please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Welcome everybody. This is, uh, my name is Jim Cerny and I'm sort of a pseudo host for the help desk for STUG and STUG stands for the Sarasota Technical Users Group. We're based yeah, in Sarasota. We have people uh, coming in from all over the country and Canada because we do these help desk meetings on Zoom and they occur two weeks after our regular monthly presentation meeting. And so if you want to get on the mailing list, you're welcome to contact me, Jim Cerny at gmail.com. And I'll be glad to take care of it. Just communicate with me that way. Um, you have to be a member to join us at these meetings. And they start at one o'clock and go till two or 2.15 once a month on the second Wednesday, two weeks after the regular monthly meeting that we have for stock. It becomes okay. the third Wednesday. Not always. Not always. It's, oh, it's, yeah. it's two yeah. weeks after the meeting, which may or may not be the third Wednesday of the month. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's two weeks after our monthly meeting. There's July 4th can get in there and so forth. So things can happen. So we would like to open it up for questions. The meeting is being recorded. And when we're done today, we'll stop the recording and it will be on YouTube. Thank you to Huey Poplock for setting this all up and acting as host, and I appreciate that very much. So I, I think have, we had, yeah, Leah? I have a couple of questions more than, more than usual, but the first one I have is that I had just recently seen the word WAVE, all in cap letters, W-A-V-E, uh, related to uh, the first time I saw it was re related to a browser. And then I have seen it since then, just in uh, uh, advertisement on a screen when I've opened it up. What is it? It gives the impression that it's something we should have. Um, but I, I am questioning always anything that says we should have it. But um, what is it? Well, there's several WAVE programs out there. There's mm -hmm. accounting programs out there. There's recording programs out there. So the, the answer to your question is not as easy as that uh, because there are multiple uh, multiple uh, software. Okay. <clears throat> the biggest one that uh, I've seen around is WAVE financials software. Um, and then locally, we have a number of places that are named WAVED, WAVE, I'm sorry. Uh, such as uh, the wave inspired, the wave staging, uh, breaking wave coffee. I mean, it goes on and on and on. So. Yeah, that I can understand. Okay. But this seems to be in quote marks, and it's like uh, it's going to help you with whatever it is, you're, enhance whatever it is you're doing on your browser. I'm, I'm not familiar with it at all. Nor am I. Okay. I would wave it goodbye. Thank you. <laughs> I I like, that was I like my your, plan. Uh, I like your hesitancy, Leah, not to just download anything because you you see a recommendation on the internet from yeah. some source you don't know. Yeah, you know that's one of the great purposes of our organization is you can ask others, and uh, as you learn, we don't know anything <laughs> about it. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, yes. we haven't heard of it yet. We'll keep our yeah. eyes peeled though. Okay. Jim, what browser you are you using, Leah? What Second. What right browser? now I have Google on and I have the, um, oh, Edge from Windows. What I would like to do is go back to the browser that I had when I was on Viasat. It was a Viasat browser, which was an independent internet that I had when I was living in the other house because Verizon and I did not get along very well. Um, but when I left there and I came over here in the new apartment, I'm on, on Comcast and Infinite Comcast and Infinity and doing very nicely with it. But I'm not crazy about the Gmail browser and not particularly crazy about the Edge browser. And I would really like to go back to the um, one that I had 
main, partly and primarily because it has no ads on it, or at least it didn't have ads well, keep coming and popping up. Browsers yes. are are independent of ISPs and and yeah. uh, uh, and even the for the most part for your operating system. That yeah, I know that. Yeah. So whatever you had should be available. It is. Uh, if, if you do, you know the name of it. Yes, it's called it's a Viasat browser. V i a s a t browser. Yeah, they may have been using one. I, I'm not familiar with. Okay, I'll have to look it up. I got it. I when I initially wanted to get away from Verizon, I knew that AT and T had just connected with Directv, and I had a had that. But she said in our area, they could not offer an, a, a, an internet service. So they told me about Viasat. Satellite. Satellite, whatever. What? Yes, it is a satellite. I had a satellite, which, which I had with DirecTV. But I liked like it very can, much. It looks like you can download it. I'll give you, I'll put the link in the uh, chat box. Thank you. Bob, do you know anything about it? Not a, nothing at all. Only know that Viasat is uh, through the satellite. But their browser should work on anything, shouldn't it? I, yeah, I don't know what it's. I don't know what it's yeah. based on. I have no idea. Yeah. Well, I if had it for. If it's, I, based, if it's based on Internet Explorer, it's not something I would use. Okay. Yeah. I you I it I had been um, I got it about four years ago and was using it for four, about three or four years and had no problems with it. Okay. At least not that I'm aware of. That was one of my questions. Okay. <laughs> Inga had Inga some questions had we were going to do first. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead, Inga. I, um, listen, I have two questions on two separate computers. Uh, my first computer is a tower computer, and when I um, turn it on, I put my password in, the screen turns black, and then um, my mouse still works, um, and I also went to my on-off button on the tower and pressed it a few times, and it kind of repeats itself, and then sometimes it shuts down, so it, it's like it's not opening up. Any ideas? You said the screen is black. How do you know your mouse works if the screen is black? Okay, because like what I have it on right now, I can move my mouse around. It has my picture in the back. It asks me for my password. It lets me put the password in, which I'm doing right now. Wait. And then it goes to a black screen mm. and then nothing. OS is not loading. Yeah. So, and like I, I said, the on off switch on the tower, mm. I push a little bit and uh, sometimes it'll shut down and then sometimes it'll just repeat again. The button on the tower, when you push it a little bit, means nothing. You have to physically push it, hold it, and wait until you can hear it really no power anymore. That's a total restart. And then okay. turn it back on again and see whether or not that allows you to go back in. But it sounds like the operating system is not loading at all. Okay, so... Push that um, button in and hold it. Hold it for 30 seconds. Okay, I'm holding it, and, then the and my screen monitor said it was going to sleep. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so is that about 30 seconds? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and let go. Go ahead. Let it go, and then turn it okay, back on. Okay, so hold on. Let's see what happens. Another thing I would suggest while we're waiting is if it still continues, 
one of the things you want to look at is make sure all of your cables in the back of your tower are plugged in and tight. I, I did that. It, I it, changed the battery on my mouse. I changed the battery on the keyboard. Um, well, the monitor the, wire is the one I'm thinking of. Does your monitor have a green light in a corner on the frame that tells you the monitor power is on? Um, you're talking. You're talking the screen, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, the monitor. Yeah, not yeah. The yeah. See now, now the screen is going to the little windows thing, yep. like it does. Yep. yep. Let it go and don't, and be patient. Especially if it hasn't been working, it's doing a lot of things in the background before it puts anything on the screen. Okay, now it's a black black screen, so just it's booting. I can hear <laughs> it. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, don't click on anything uh, while it's booting up. Right. Even if it's a blank screen, you may not see it, but you could be clicking on something. I had that after a recent update a week or so ago on one of my computers. Okay, I know this did an update. Okay, now hold on. It's giving me my date that. So let's see if it'll ask me for my password. Okay, so let me put my password in. We'll see what happens. Wait. Enter. Saying welcome. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. Just, just wait. Don't get yes, patience. Yep. Yeah. Be yeah. patient. I know. We all must have patience. <laughs> Especially since this is a tower, probably doesn't have an SSD drive. Well, what I'm trying to do is it has uh, my husband's QuickBooks in it, and. Uh, um, I just want to use this computer till the end of the year, and then he's dissolving the company. So uh, I want to get rid of it because I have a laptop. Okay, it said welcome, and I still have a black screen. And I put oh, the pad. It said welcome, and then the screen went black? Because you obviously yes. could read welcome, right? Yes. Patience. Okay. Just give yeah, it just let it. Just let it sit while we're here. Just patience. Okay. Now, up on the top, it's saying personalized settings, setting up personalized settings. It's, it was doing it was doing an upgrade, probably yeah. to the next version. Does it have Windows 10 on it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, it's doing an upgrade to the next version of Windows 10. That's when all of that stuff that you're talking about happens. So, And that could take several minutes. It could take a half hour. Wait, no, no, no. I got my picture, my good picture, and it looks like it's slowly loading up. Okay. Yep. If patience was the that's what it needed. What it total restart. Okay. See, I didn't know I. Yep. Uh, okay, it's up. Okay, that's okay, one. Next, wait, 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 wait. Yep. So another thing you could do is power it down. Not right now, but when you power it down and power it back up. Maybe look at your watch and see how long it takes to power up. When it does and it checks for upgrades, it will take a lot longer for you to get your home screen and get going. But after it does the upgrades, it shouldn't take nearly as long to power up. And once you get used to how long it takes your computer to power up based on the age of the computer, the older it is, the longer it takes, then uh, you'll, you'll be used to how long you have to wait before you start trying to click on something. Okay, that's okay. Just, just a thought. Jim, now, there's two hands up. Hopefully there are comments and not yeah. questions going okay. in a different direction. Okay, any other comments for this question? Anybody? There's two hands up. Caitlin and Dorothy. Dorothy and Caitlin's hand, I think, was up first. Okay, Caitlin, go ahead. I have a couple of small questions. One is, I think, loosely related to this. At a recent meeting, someone, when I uh, closed down my laptop uh, at the end of the day, I pushed the power button and I think I push shut off or whatever it is. And someone had said that the best thing to do is to push a restart, wait for it to restart and then push the off. 
because that deletes everything. You won't get back into where you were, but it kind of starts everything fresh. What what is the recommended way, I guess, of uh, doing shutting down your computer? You, I had never even have. heard about that before uh, a couple of weeks ago, I think it was. Okay, Huey, I think you had a comment last month about yeah, and I think computer. yeah, and I think Bob's got uh, a comment, so I'll go first, and I'll let Bob answer if I don't hit the uh, the spots. If you shut down, that's fine, but uh, that doesn't re. It's it's not like a cold start when you start up again, mm -hmm. and that's where the restart is. But for normal nightly uh, shuts shutdowns or your normal shutdown, I would say, just do the shutdown. But every once in a while, I would do a restart uh, somewhere in there. And it, it, what it does, it shuts everything off and then comes back in with a cold start. So anything that it's saving in memory is uh, not, not on the hard drive, but, it, but in memory uh, kind of goes away. And, and you get a good fresh start. It's like pulling the plug and plugging it back in where uh, shutting it off just... <coughs> You like your TV, you never shut your TV off, even when you got the remote in your hand, you hit shut off, mm -hmm. it's still on, it's mm -hmm. just in mm -hmm. a in a sleep stage, and that's basically what your computer will do as well when you do it a shutdown. Bob, hate some programs quite often require a restart because things don't happen or change in the registry until a restart is done, simply turning it off doesn't make, make those changes happen. So like Huey said, nightly, shut it off. Once in a while, do a restart and then shut it off so that if there have any updates, those changes will take place. Great, if you thank have you Windows, very much. If you have Windows updates, they always tell you you need to restart the yeah. computer, okay? But on a normal basis at night, I shut my system off. I don't let it go to sleep. I shut it off, but once in a while, do a restart and then shut it down. Okay. Norm, uh, usually what happens when Microsoft requires a restart, they kind of do it for me. So I was just not used to using yeah. that button at right. all. And they kind of seem to do it automatically that they restart it. And I wasn't aware that that is what was happening. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Dorothy, you had your hand up. Did you want to make a comment? Uh, well, I was I was just going to comment on the bias that, or what is bias that, whatever it's called. <laughs> I Googled it, and it, it says it's basically a browser for people who have the satellite um, service. Yes. Yeah, and I did look in the, in the FAQ, and it did say it's a Chromium base, so it's going to be a lot like Chrome. Yeah. yeah. So it, has it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't hurt to download it and run it, so... I, as I said, I had been using Biosat for about three years, and then they offered the browser free and said, try it. Yeah. So I decided to try it, and I had I loved it. There were no ads for one thing. Another, I could get what I needed rather quickly, um, and it was very easy to operate, and I never had any problems with it. But I thought that because I was, had to leave uh, Biosat, I would have to close it down. Now I don't think I do, so I'm going to go back to it. I, I was just going to comment. I have a hard time getting rid of equipment that works fine. <laughs> so I, I um, recently rebuilt my 12-year-old HP um, PC because the hard drive went, and I put an SSD in it, and it boots up in seven seconds, and it's amazing. And, and the computer is perfectly usable, and I'll keep that as my Windows 10 computer because it won't upgrade to 11. And then my current one, even though it's an i7 with 16 gigs, um, I'll use that as Windows 11. But uh, yeah, it's interesting what you can do with old technology if you use it for different things. Dorothy, what's an SSD? I've heard that term thrown oh. around and I have no idea what it is. Solid state. Solid drive. state drive. And it's quite amazing. It's about the size of a credit card. 
that replaces the, text, the big the hard text drive. The place of what? The big hard drive. Uh huh. It's it's electronic rather than mechanical. It replaces this. <laughs> uh huh. Thank you. I have an HP that I bought refurbished, and I assumed it would be ready for Windows 11, and then got the surprise that no, it doesn't have the security chip. It has 1.2 instead of 2.0, and it also doesn't have a processor that's uh, new enough. And then one morning, all of a sudden, I have no idea what happened, but that computer is now running Windows 11. <laughs> it had no upgrades. It still has 1.2 for the security chip. And the I haven't changed the motherboard, so it still has the same operating system. I mean, the same uh, hardware as before, but it is running Windows 11. It has now for two weeks. It's updated to another version. I'm an insider, so of course I always get updates when the new ones come out. It's already done an update. I still don't know why it's running Windows 11, but it is. So it's because the Microsoft Ferry came and blessed you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't. It doesn't have when I when I run that program that tells you whether or not your system is ready for Windows 11. It says no, it's not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For people that aren't an insider, is it not available until January? Well, they're hoping maybe on some you'll have some computers that you can purchase new that oh, will yeah. have that will have it on it. But for yeah. the rest, it'll probably be the early part of next year. Okay, yeah. Has everybody asked the first question that they had yet? And then we have to, I know Inga has another question, but I wanna make sure everybody gets the first question asked that wanted to ask anything today. Anybody else? I'm Russell, I have a question. Okay. Um, I gave up my Malware bytes, and um, I keep getting it coming back and and coming onto my screen, and you know it they they choose a different way, and I'm wondering how I can get rid of that because it's annoying, and I'm afraid I'm going to hit on one of the things that says, oh, this is a new one, or this is a new mer version, and then I'll be stuck with trying to get rid of it again. You do the uninstall. Do the uninstall? Yeah, did you uninstall Malwarebytes? Yes, I did. And it still didn't go away? No, it keeps coming back. We're trying Bob, to come back. Bob, does the Avast uh, uninstall... Uh, you had something that... Was it a web page or was it the Avast program or something that could uh, tell you how to remove the different antiviruses, anti malware? Bytes is not an antivirus program. Yeah, it's a malware, but right. you know, anti malware. And you malware might have to bites. go. You might have to go to malwarebytes. Dot was it org? I believe, and uh, see if they have but a. There is a malware bytes clean, which is a program that's supposed to remove it. And he can get that from malwarebytes.org, correct? Yeah. Is that because he had a paid for a version? Did you, Russell, have a paid version? Originally, yes. Okay. But then when I got Howie's favorite program, um, I didn't renew it. Ah, that's why you're getting the stuff. <laughs> they want you back. I mean, they want me back. It's just marketing. Yeah. yeah, but they've left some something installed, and you need to uh, go to their website, and they, there's some software. Uh, I'm going to download. I'm going to post. I'm going to post a link in the chat. Follow it. It has directions, and that it will let you know whether you, if you had the paid version you probably still have all of this stuff 
in the registry and everywhere else for the paid version. So follow the directions on this for the paid word version to get rid of the rest of malware bytes. Okay. Yeah, that's a, in the chat box. That's a good example because uh, if you use Windows to delete an app, it will, Windows will do what it can to delete it. But some of these apps are so clever, they have things tucked away. And the next step, if Windows can't delete it, is to actually, as Bob suggested, go to the website of the product itself and look for a delete this from your system or remove me from the system because the product software people would know how to best remove it even better than Windows. There are some people that don't like IO bit. I happen to like their product, their removal tool, their uninstaller. It does a fairly good job when you can't find a program to totally remove it. Even their free version does a pretty good job. But the antivirus and anti-malware programs- They have all to go, have their own, correct. Yeah, because they have to go so deep into the uh, operating system yep. to protect you that uh, to get it out, just a normal uh, uninstall doesn't get rid of it. Okay, let's, uh, I think everybody had a first round and Inga had another question then. We'll start yes. round two. Uh, but I had a comment Inga. about the um, closing down quite frequently when I get ready to close, when I'm closing down, pops up, I hit the buttons where I'm supposed to, I, I get a message that says a particular app did not close, but before I can, did not open properly, it says, and before I can do anything, it shuts off. Is that telling me that I didn't close something down that I should have? I'm not worried about it because not had any problems with anything. Okay, that was not my question. That's something that just came up. Um, I use a mouse, which I dearly like, but occasionally I, it's becoming more frequent that I cannot find the mouse on my screen. I can't find the arrow. I have to move it so that it will become visible on the top taskbar or the you know, toolbar up, up at the top. And then I can very carefully bring it down to where I want it to be so I know where I am to be able to continue. Is there something that I'm not doing right? Or is that just indicative of a mouse? I thought it was because it was getting old and it needed a battery and I couldn't change the battery because I couldn't get it open. So I bought a new one, but it's doing the same thing. I have a fairly new, I, just bought a compute, new computer a while back, and that's when it really started. Okay. At Windows 10? Yes, sir. And then you can make some settings to your visibility of that mouse. Okay. And the settings, and then let me get in there so I can. Devices and mice, I think. Mouse. Yeah, it's under accessibility. And then mice. I, I was just going to say I had a problem with my mouse doing anything. It just was, it had a mind of its own after one of the updates. And then after yes. an, another update, then it fixed itself. But I did unplug the mouse and then plug it back in as well. Wow. Well, I've tried that a few times and it doesn't seem to help. So I'm going to try this other Visibility and then mice. Okay. Is this a wireless mouse? Yes. You uh, and it's a USB, and you got the little dongle that goes into the USB port. Yes. Try a different port. Oh, okay. Next time you shut it off, change just change it and put another USB port. Sometimes okay. that'll help. Sometimes it won't. My computer only has two USB ports, but I'll try the other one. You can get a port multiplier that'll change one port into four. Oh, or five. yeah. Thank you. Always, always handy to have one. Laptops, especially, only have two ports, and I keep adding more things. I had a uh, must have been a Toshiba that I had because I had two Toshibas, and they had three ports. Yeah. So. 
Yeah. Okay. But anyway, but this other idea I shall look into. Thank you very much, both, both of those. Remember okay. that your extenders cut down the power okay. the more devices you use. Yes. And if a device needs quite a bit of power, the second device may be starving. Okay, so mm -hmm. one, one way to cure that is when you buy an extender, get one that has its own supply, power supply. It needs to be plugged in and then you don't have that problem. I have three or four extenders, but all of them are powered, so. Gotcha, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Inga, you had your second question, please. Um, yes, I have a, this is a laptop computer. Um, and I have this uh, glare, glare, glare utilities. Yeah, and it tells me I have to download something. Uh, I guess a new update, which I did. I'm just looking at the picture I took. And then I opened up the file and it wants me to, it says the app you're trying to install isn't a Microsoft verified app, get apps That's from right. the store or install anyway. So I really didn't do nothing. Should I Inst have hit install anyway? Go ahead, Bob. Go ahead, Bob. Glary, Glary is a trusted program. And the answer is yes, you can. Microsoft would love you to get everything through the store, but lots of things you can't get through the store. Okay. And you've also been using Glary for probably quite some time. Okay. So all I have to do is hit that and then I'll be then okay. It will do the, then it will do the installation. Yes. Okay. I just didn't want to go to the store. I, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> well, you can hit the store. If it's got it on the store, then no, it'll it download didn't. it. Right. No, it had all other crap on the store. Correct. <laughs> Glary is a trusted program. There she goes, program. being technical on us. <laughs> I personally don't use Glary. I use C Cleaner, but that's a personal taste. What's the, what's the difference between Glary and a C Cleaner? I use both. I run well, C Cleaner. I, I run C Cleaner first because it's so fast. And then yeah. I run Glary to clean up my system. So I do okay. both almost every day. I have <laughs> C Cleaner. A disk cleanup, malware bytes, AVG, Belloc, and Glary is. Do I? Bel do I Belloc, know? Belloc is for for just information. Belloc yeah. does nothing except give you information. Okay, malware so bytes gets rid of malware. If you have a decent antivirus, a new antivirus, you really don't need malware bytes because your modern antivirus also checks for malware. In the old days, you needed both. Nowadays, you really don't. Okay, so you're saying Malware I, Bytes doesn't like that, but that's <laughs> that's how it is. Um, yep. So you're saying I could just use the C Cleaner and not even use the Glary Utilities if I don't want? Correct. Okay. Yep. Some that's people like some people like Glary. It, it does a real yep. good job. Some people like some C people cleaner. like it's like C cleaner. Yep. It's like having yeah. a Chevy. You know what's better, a Chevy or a Ford? Well, it depends on. Yep. Well, I, like. I mentioned I use both when I run C cleaner. It does its thing, and then I run Glary. It always finds more stuff. And I suppose you could go add Infintum and do five more cleaners, and they'll all find something. So Correct. Where do you stop? You know. And it when, when it comes hopefully to it doesn't hopefully it doesn't find something that stops your system from booting. <laughs> <laughs> and in my case, I use none of the above. What do you none use? None of the yep. above. None of the above. Yep. I use uh, Windows uh, uh, Security. No, no, what, what, no what's Windows the name Defender? of it? Windows Defender? Yes. Keeps well, me that's clean, your antivirus. Running. And I'm like, a, uh, is it, who had the 12-year-old uh, computer? Dorothy. 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 Oh, Dorothy. Okay. Well, I, I can up you by two years. Mine is 14 years old. <laughs> but locally, manufactured locally, um, I, like uh, you, had to have a, a hard drive replacement. Uh, it goes from dead stop to desktop in eight seconds. No wow. complaints. 
Now you just use your Windows Defender and that's it? That's it. Okay, because I have that too. So do I have two? No, it no. does not operate if there's another device in there that's other software that's doing the same thing. If you delete a software that is virus protection, Windows Defender, or sometimes it's called Windows Security, will automatically turn itself on to protect you. And it will give you a message that says, uh, Windows Security is working or been turned on or whatever. So you're free to delete a paid service to use when Windows Defender or Windows Security, which comes with Windows. Okay. It and also when, has it also has the clean the disk functions as well, you know. If you okay. wish to use them. And I say I agree with that totally, that that I have no problems with my system. And uh, I don't frequent uh, websites that might cause a problem. I just don't have, you know, the interest in that stuff. So that's where a lot of that stuff comes from, is it some of these uh, different sites that uh, are somewhat questionable in, in, in what they're doing, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, Caitlin, take your hand down. I have another question. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Whenever, okay, and um, it's a question, uh, it's, it's another, I think it was APCUG, uh, talked about a device that uh, allows you to copy things right through a, excuse me one second, I'm trying to use the correct term. Uh, anyway, it allows you to copy things uh, quickly by running the device down a page. And what you want to do is to capture that page digitally and then be able to manipulate it, enlarge it, maybe move it somewhere or whatever. And ever since then, I've been trying to find that session as to where that was, because all of a sudden, a need for that has come up in my family. And I, does anyone know what I'm talking about? I know that Yui was probably there and Bob Gosticha and maybe one or two other people at that APCUG uh, session. Tech for Seniors on probably Monday. Does that ring a bell for anyone? I don't remember hearing anything about that. It's like a scanning device, but it's easy to use. You don't, you don't lay the book or whatever down on a scanner. You kind of run it along. Uh, I've got it's a handheld. It was a handheld device. I, I think it was just using a phone and snapping a picture of it, and then running the scan or scan software that available for some phones, and then doing that. I think is what you mean. I don't know. I also did a a, a demonstration of a of a piece of equipment that I have. It sits on my desk. That's got a I, camera that sh shoots down on things. Uh, but I don't think that's what, that doesn't sound like what you're talking about. That, that might be it. It was, it, it was uh, very fast. This is a diary that my mother kept for 20 years and it's many pages. So I was trying to avoid taking pictures yeah, the, of every single the, page because I need this, to share this, this with family members. That's a Caesar. That's a, uh, I think it was about 150 bucks and it has software that you can, uh, you put underneath it and, uh, and I demonstrated it and yes. you put software in there, uh, using its software. It takes a picture. You, you flip the page and you hit, hit the button and it's either a, a hand button or a foot button will do it. Take a, the next shot and you keep doing it and it will do, you can do a whole book quite quickly that way. That was uh, it. I think that was it, Yui. Could, do you okay, remember it, what the name was? It's a, it's a, uh, yeah, I'm looking at the uh, item right now. It's a Caesar, which is C Z U R. And that was probably, it was on Tech for Seniors. And we do have, uh, if you go to the Tech for Senior website, there is uh, a place there where you can take a look at a spreadsheet that has all of the items that we've covered. Do a search for the Caesar, Caesar and find it. 
of what uh, episode it was and then look it up. I can try to do that while we're on here for you. Thank you. That would be great. And if not, I'll, I'll try, try to find that search function. There's another quick one you can use on an Android phone by Google. It's called Photo Scan by Google. And you basically just, it's like taking a picture, but it scans it as a document. Uh-huh. Okay, she's thank you. She, she, she's talking multiple pages. Yeah. A whole, a whole book of pages. So it would take quite a... Right, exactly. I mean, 150 sounds cheap compared to what I would have to go through otherwise to do this. And it then has to be shareable with family members because they have to translate this almost untranslatable from another language that my mother wrote this diary in. So that's why we're. If you take a picture, if you take a picture uh, on a, well, if a phone, for instance, my, my Android phone, which is a Google phone. Anytime I have a picture of something that contains text, it doesn't mm -hmm. care what the language is. It will tell me what the text is. It can copy the text for me and it can translate the text for me. I, I yeah, I don't think I so. Have a, yeah, I have a pixel phone and when I, whoops, and it's talking to me now. But anytime, anytime I take a picture that has text in it, it automatically volunteers to put that text into a text document. And if it's in a foreign language, it's willing to translate it to English. It sounds wonderful, but it's, it's Hungarian old style, the way they used to write, all the letters look the same. Oh, you did. M and it's, N's and okay. I's and... Uh, if that, it could do it, it would be absolutely genius invention, but I doubt very much that that technology is like that. But thank you. Adeline, look at that. I look familiar? Yeah. It's hard to see. Uh-huh. That's 181 pages of my one of my mother's diaries that I transcribed. Uh-huh. And what did you use for that? I actually okay. scanned them because it's all in, in um, cursive from 1928. I, I actually put a, a note to you in the chat box. Oh, okay. I'll look for it. Yeah. After you scan it, how do you get the digital form that can be put on your computer or whatever? Uh, no, I actually scanned it with a with a desktop scanner. And, and if it's not, well- Forgive right, me, you know, I'm not, I don't know how to get something like that back into my computer. Well- I mean, it puts I, it in your computer. It, 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 it doesn't take that much work, it, it, but there's a couple of factors. Like I say, you can either call or we can uh, do email and, and I'll share with you the way I did it. That'll certainly give you an idea. Thank and you, I, Marshall. For the same reason that you are, there are uh, 12 family members that wanted copies of this. Right. Okay. Thank you. I'll look for that in chat. Okay. The, the article that I wrote is, uh, uh, I just put it in the chat box and it shows the scanner. And as I recall, the scanner, I haven't used it in a while, but as I recall, the software does allow you to do different languages too. Wow. Okay. I've got an old school. It only understands English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But mine has the OCR feature. I think you and I talked about that, Huey, briefly. Yeah. It's, it's that we had documents for, for Stug. Op optical character recognition. But that's right. This, so this software does it in several languages, too. I mean, that's that just mind boggling. It, does, it, it doesn't, doesn't translate, but if it's in a different language, you can tell it and it'll, it'll OCR it in that language. That's, that's just cool stuff. <laughs> and how about cursive though? Cause I think Katalin said the diary was written in cursive. Yes. It's in cursive. It's that's, it's not uh, a type of type written thing or anything like that. It's very, it's very hard 
Do do you it's have very the ability, hard for me to read? Can if you read it, do you are you do you have the ability? Do you know the, do you know the language to translate it? I know a little bit of the language to some extent, but distinguishing even from I don't I I didn't learn to read Hungarian. I just learned to speak it at home. So I don't look at a word and immediately know what it is. I have to sound it out. And so then I have to know what the individual letters are in her handwriting, which and that's our difficulty there. But because we're willing are, to do it, but in, in Google Docs and in, in Microsoft, you have the ability to speak into into the microphone and record. So if you're if you have the ability to read it and translate and, and then speak it in English, you can you don't have to sit there and type it. You could say it and it'll record it. Okay. And and, and turn it into and you could translate it. If if you spoke it even in Hungarian, it would it would then be able to translate it from Hungarian to English. Okay, Google, uh, that's Google Docs, did you say? Google, yep. Okay, that's their, that's their word processor, similar to Microsoft Word. That's an amazing product. That's what computers are for, to do that kind of thing. Yeah. You just have to have the right tools and know how to use them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> If something, if something is in PDF, you can convert it to Word in Google Docs. You don't even have to do that. If you have Word, if, if you have a PDF, you just open it with Word and it will turn it into text. That true. That too, yeah. You just open up Word and say, open up this PDF file and it will create the file in as a Word document. If it has trouble... <coughs> OCRing it, it will then take the text and make a picture of it. Uh, and so then you might need another tool, but your roofers are working, Jim. Yes, I was <laughs> going to make a, a quick comment and then use, mute myself. Really, it's, a, it's another question um, that I've heard of Windows 11 and I read about it on the internet briefly. And as far as I can understand for my use, and 99.9% .9 of people's use of our STUG organization, I don't see anything in Windows 11 that changes anything other than cosmetics. Is that, can I have other opinions from my other, but I'll leave myself here. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. <clears throat> and if you have Windows 10, you don't have to even think about an upgrade until 2025. And there's no there, was a, there was an email I think it was yesterday that I got that talked about Windows 11. And as I was looking at it, basically, it was just talking about how they designed it, why they designed it, and what it was going to look like. But it didn't tell you anything about what it was going to do that was different. It just is looking different. There are differences. I'm sure there are, but they didn't. A particular email that I was looking at did not, and it had little programs that you could click on, but none of them talked about what it would be doing differently, but it just basically was talking about what it looked like differently and why they did it that way. Bob, Bob G has done a whole bunch of videos on some of the things it does and what's different about it. Yeah, I did a presentation for this Windows uh, SIG for CFCS, the Central Florida group, that I do, and I just put a link into the page, and it'll be the one at the top of the page with uh, links to different articles that explain it, but also there's a video there that I demonstrated a whole bunch of things, but also in that list of links is Bob G's uh, uh, list of videos that he's made. They're all two or three minute videos that are all very well done on uh, Windows 11 and s some of the differences, but it's still in, in testing mode. It's not even going to be available until after the first of the year for us to upgrade to, but you'll be able to buy some computers probably Christmas time that'll have it on it. Uh, and Microsoft's going to do a big push on it, but do you need to go to it? If you got a Windows 10 machine, as long as yeah. you do the updates to Windows uh, 10, 
until 2025, you're good. Yay! Yes. <laughs> right. By 2025, if we're still here, we probably need a new computer anyway. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Not for Dorothy. She's good. And, and Marshall, they're going to keep their chugging yep. their steam engines oh. going there. You got it. I still have a Dell. I still have a Dell that's 14 years old. It yeah. still works. There you go. Old, but it works. I was going to say I have a Dell Inspirian 17 inch laptop, but it wouldn't yep. update past 1809, which really annoyed me. But it's after all the troubleshooting with Dell and Microsoft, it's because Dell didn't release a driver update for that model. So that kind of annoys me. Okay, does anybody have other questions? Anything from anybody, I think? Uh, yes, yeah. I have a Caitlin, do you want to go ahead and then we'll come to you, Leah? Go ahead. I'll yes. read myself. Oh, okay. It has to do with uh, calendars. I'm still very behind in, I, I missed, somehow I missed 10 years. Syncing calendars in different places. I don't use the calendar that's on my laptop. First of all, I don't even know whose calendar it is. It's on my task bar. When it comes up, there's a calendar there. I don't know if that's a Google calendar or Windows calendar or whose calendar it is. And Thank then yourself. there's a different calendar on my phone. And then other calendars pop up. So it's useless for me to use those, sync those calendars or even to use them because I don't know how to sync them. Is there an easy way? Do I, what do I have to do? I mean, is it very complicated or does everyone know like a push button way to do that? I use Google's calendar and it's synced. Yes. Because I have Google on all my laptops, desktops, phones. They all have Google on it. So it's synced on everything. I have, I'm use, I use Google Calendar. I have it on my phone, my PC, my Chromebook, my iPad, uh, my iPhone, and they all use the same calendar. Uh, and, and, and in fact, I have, have uh, Robin's calendar and I have somebody else's calendar and they all I allow them to use my calendar. So all those items are on there as well. So and how do I get to it on my laptop? I'm a Yahoo email person. I also somewhere along the line created a Google email account. Do I go to that account and that that would give it to me automatically? Well, I don't know about automatically, but you'd be able to use that account on all your devices and use that calendar. When I go to the doctor's office, I have my phone on my arm here. And what I do is uh, uh, I just go to the calendar and put it in. And it's automatically when I get home, it's on my desktop and it's on my iPad and it's on uh, whatever uh, my Chromebook as well. So I discovered it. Uh huh. I, I was just going to say, I, I've discovered that sometimes it doesn't always look exactly the same way on each of these devices. When you look at it, when you look at it, your computer, it, it's nice, big calendar style. But when you look at it on the phone initially, it looks like just a listing of your your dates. It well, doesn't always look can, the same. And you can change the look of it. Yeah, There's you it. can. But do I get get to it through my email and uh, password i mean no you get it i don't browser. use it and so where is it basically through your browser let me, yes let you me have to it. have a gmail account right so just go to google and then open my you know just go to my G okay i know uh, it, it sounds basic but there are certain basic things that what I've learned to do, I can do, but when I have to change to something else, I'm not always sure what happens. No, that was not going. If you have a Google account and you go yeah. to the Google search engine webpage, for example, or your Gmail, look for a grid of nine little tiny squares in a tic-tac-toe pattern. And if you left click that, it opens up all the Google products, all the uh, this free stuff, and one of them on there will be the calendar. Okay, thanks. Thank you. I'll, I'll try that. 
Okay, see my see, see my screen? Right. He's talking about this right here. I use Google all the time, by the way, as my search engine. And go to calendar, which that. is where? Right, right there. Right there. Right there. I understand, but I'm saying, how did you get that to pop up? I clicked on it. Oh, you go to the, the, the nine, nine first, buttons. The nine dots. Right here. How do you get to those, she's asking. Yes. It's, you, you can see it on the screen, can't you? I can see it on your screen. It never popped up on my screen. So what I'm saying is we're going way, way back. I, I've used, I opened a Google email account at some point, which I, never, I hardly ever use. Open your Chrome I've browser. I've never seen anything that looks like this. Open your Chrome browser. You just go to Chrome and open up the Chrome. Of course, I've got Google here because that's my uh, search engine. But I'm just go to google.com, which you really don't even <clears throat> make sure you're signed into your account. And I can change my account because I have several Google accounts. And when I do that, and I go there, it's still going to be there. And I open it. Okay, uh, I will calendar. try. And you will see over here. Yep. There's, I have uh, one calendar, it's called Daily Tips. Another one is mine. Another one's Holidays. Another one's Tech for Seniors. And here's another one. If I click this, you'll see that it added a whole bunch more things to it. And I undo it. So you can add different calendars. No. Well. I'll try. You may get this same question again next time. <laughs> if I can't figure it out. Look for those nine little dots on the right-hand side once you open up the Google I browser. I have never seen that. I have never seen that, is what I'm saying. I use Google all the time. And I have this Google If you go, if you Google go to google.com, do a slash, and type in calendar. And okay. what it'll do is it'll take you to calendar.google.com is where it'll take you and then you'll be in the in the Google Calendar. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. I'll figure it out. Okay. Thank you. Thank you guys. I mean if you do click on a Google product that's free and you haven't logged in yet, it will prompt you to log in with your Google account. So good to go. Anybody else have any other questions? I have one. Okay. I came with lots of questions this morning. And this one may sound really stupid, but how can you make a front and back of an email? Every time I try to go to print out an email, it only prints on one side. Right. Even if I try to do it through the document, uh, the page uh, printer, page icon that, I can use for printing. It only does one Maybe side. Is it to end because they got something under here? That would be a function of your printer. Let me put something and what kind of a printer do you have? Help me find this thing. What kind of printer do I have? Russell, we can hear you. I have an HB printer. Yeah, I just muted. An it. HP H printer, and yeah. I, I can print on both sides on many of the other things. But every time I try to do uh, the uh, idea on a uh, email it gives no print options except to select the number of pages you want uh there should be a more or you excuse me you can go into your uh, uh windows settings and go to devices and printers find mm -hmm. your defaults and make sure you have uh two-sided or duplex printing turned as your default and then okay. it should work Okay, thank you very much. Because yeah, you'll want to sometimes you'll want to turn it off if you don't want to have both sides printed. Yeah, but many times printed emails are such that you do want both sides printed, but you want it printed on one sheet of paper instead of two sheets of paper. And sometimes, if you go in when you go to the printer, there may be a word that says properties. Click on that, and that'll give you some additional okay. settings that you uh, you can't get. <clears throat> the way you're doing it now. Okay, thank you. Okay, anybody else? Anything else? 
We've been on an hour, had a great time. I learned about 10, 10 more new things. Only, only two of which I wanted to learn. <laughs> but I learned 10, 10 things today. Thank you all. Anybody else, anything before we dismiss? Thank you for your time. Hey, thank, thank you, you. Again thank for you. recording it and have a great week and look for the emails again. And uh, we'll see you next month for the help desk. Thank, thank you. you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.